and hello, and thank you for joining us to make history today. I am Hester Wheeler, Michigan's Assistant Secretary of State, and I will be hosting our event to select 13 commissioners for the state's first ever Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission. This is truly a historic day for Michigan's democracy. Back in November 2018, Michiganders across the state voted to amend our Constitution to create the state's first ever Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission. This commission of randomly selected Michigan citizens will fairly and transparently redraw our election districts for state legislature and the federal House of Representatives before the 2022 election cycle. Now, nearly two years after voters amended the Constitution and almost 10,000 people applied to serve, we will randomly draw the names of 13 commissioners. They will be drawn from the pool of semifinal applicants currently posted on our website, redistrictingmichigan.org. As is required by the Constitution, this pool was created through a, randomly selection, a random selection of 200 applicants that mirrored the geographic and demographics of our state. These semifinalists were then provided to the state legislative's uh, four top leaders to strike up to 20 candidates. Today, from the 180 semifinalists, we will randomly select the 13 commissioners. Four will affiliate with the Democratic Party, four will affiliate with the Republican Party, and five will not affiliate with either party. The selection will be carried out by the independent accounting firm Raymond LLC, which was selected through a public bidding process. With us today from Raymond is Stephen Bland, and I'll now turn things over to him so that he can walk us through the random selection. Stephen Bland. Thank you very much. Very delighted to be here today. Well, what we are going to do today is use the software that we used to make the initial uh, selection of uh, voter files in order to send out the mailings and give people an opportunity to apply. We're going to be using a piece of software that's called Caseware IDEA. This is an industry leading uh, software used by CPA firms to make random selections in an audit environment and we're adapting it for use today. In order to do that, I'll just walk you through each step as we go through the process of making this final selection. We're going to start by going out to is saved and I'm going to download that onto my local hard drive so that we can begin the selection process. I'm going to save this file down to my desktop. With that done we now have that file saved here on the desktop. I'm going to go back to Caseware IDEA and we are going to import that database. I've clicked on plus for the desktop. We're going to select Microsoft Excel file and navigate out again to where I just saved that file. It's going to show the information here directly as it appears on the website. I'm going to say the first row contains field names and this will be the same data that's publicly available. When I say OK, we should import a file that contains 180 records. We can quickly look at it on screen and make sure it's doing what we expected it to. You see the application IDs, the source, random mailing, first and last name, cities, uh, information, zip code, and we get a little further over, we've got party affiliation, all the data that was currently publicly posted. What we need to do now is break this list into three lists because the random um, selection feature in this software, it will pick from anybody on the list without any regard. So in order to make sure that we get this broken down four, four, and five, I need three separate lists. We'll make three separate draws and then we'll aggregate those together to a single list of 13 to finish the process. So my first step then is to extract the three sub lists from here going to go to analysis, extract, direct. And when we finish with this process, uh, we'll be able to export a uh, visual indication of the database structure and how this was all done. It will uh, memorialize the process. We're going to call this first extraction democratic, and we're going to enter the criteria that party, which is one of the fields in the database, equals 
democratic. That has extracted from the list of 180 records, 56 that are on the democratic list. I'm gonna temporarily close that and make the next selection a direct extraction. We're gonna call this one Republican. Set the criteria. Party equals Republican. That has extracted 58 records from the list that were Republican. I'm going to temporarily close that and make our final selection of those who affiliated with neither party. Direct extraction, we'll call this neither, and set the criteria. Party equals neither. And that's extracted 58 records, or I'm sorry, uh, 66 records. Just as a quick visual, we'll double check the math here. I listed them in uh, alphabetical order. I'm just going to quick, quick run a tally on that. I've got 56 Democrats, 58 Republicans, 66 neither. Totals 180 matches the total database. All right, now we're going to go through and make our sub-selections, the random samples from each of those groups, and then we'll group them all back together. Actually, before I even group them back together, let me just create an empty um, data structure to hold that so we can bring them in. I'm going to create, a, it's technically a direct extraction of no records, but that gives me the placeholder to bring them together. I'm going to call this final selection, and I'm going to give it a criteria that comes back with no records just so I have an empty placeholder for it. So we'll say ID number equals zero, and that will come back with no records, but at least we've got a placeholder to put the results when we're ready for it. So that one's currently highlighted red or colored red because there's no records there. All right, back to the Democratic list. We will make our selection. We are coming over to the sample menu, and we're making a random sample. It's going to ask the number of records to extract, and we want four members of the Democratic Party, so I'm going to enter four as the number of records. The next item says random number seed, and my computer has randomly picked a number, but what we promised through the process that was in the Q&As is that we would feed the application a random number seed at the exact time of the draw based on date and time to make it as random as possible. So it is, today is August 17, 2020. The current time on my computer is 138, so 0138. And that is the random base for this seed. We're going to call this file selection dash democratic. And when I click OK, it'll take just a moment. And it has now picked four records. We will come back and read these names in a moment when we've grouped them all together. I'm now opening the Republican list. Going to do the same process. We're going to choose a random sample. That random sample will also contain four records. We're going to call that Selection Republican. The date is still August 17, 2020. The time is now 1.39 make that selection. We now have four selected records from Republicans. I'm going to close these two and do the same process now for neither. Here's our list of 66 records from the 180 that were not affiliated with either major party. Select random. This time we want five members of the commission from that group. I'm going to call that selection neither, and enter a random number seed, August 17, 2020, time is still 139, and say OK, and we have five names selected there. 
finally, I'm going to click on the final selection placeholder that we had created and append. And we are going to add the three lists. We have the Democratic selection, the Republican selection, and the unaffiliated selection. And we're going to add those. That is being joined together. And you can see here on the left part of the screen that it says we now have 13 records grouped together. I'm just going to very quickly verify by scrolling over to the party affiliation. We have one, two, three, four Democratic members, one, two, three, four Republican members, and one, two, three, four, five unaffiliated um, party members. So this is our final list of 13 individuals, and I've been asked to read off the names here. Our first name is M. Rothhorn. Our second name is Juanita Curry. Our third name is Dustin Witches. Our fourth name is Brittany Kellum. Fifth name is Aaron Wagner. Sixth name is Cynthia Orton. Seventh name is Douglas Clark. The eighth name is Rhonda Lange. Ninth name is Janice Vallette. Tenth name is James Decker. The eleventh name is Richard Weiss. The twelfth name is Stephen Lett. And the 13th name is Anthony Ide. And I apologize for anyone whose name I mispronounced, but those are at least the names. So back to you, sir. Thank you so much, Stephen Bland. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. This is history. Our team will post the names of the commissioners on our website shortly. Uh, their applications are already on the site among the applications for the rest of the finalists. The Secretary of State is now the secretary without a vote of the commission. Our team will fulfill this responsibility with the same approach that guided the administration of the application and selection process. Transparency at every step, independence of the process, and citizen-led input and engagement. In the coming weeks, we will work with the commissioners to determine availability for a first meeting, with the Secretary of, which the Secretary of State is required to convene prior to October 15th of this year. All of the commission's meetings are required by constitution to be publicly noticed, live streamed and open to the public. There will be many opportunities throughout the next year for the members of the public to provide input. We hope and expect the same enthusiasm and citizen led effort that brought this change to our constitution and prompted nearly 10,000 people to apply to serve on the commission will continue in its final stage and critical stage of this process. We encourage all Michigan residents uh, to stay engaged and stay tuned for the many opportunities they will have to share their perspectives on how to map Michigan's future to be more fair and representative of all voters and communities. To receive updates about this process and opportunities to stay engaged, voters can go to redistrictingmichigan.org or follow at redistrictingmi on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. On that note, we'll close for the day. Again, thank you all for joining us for this first ever event in Michigan history. Thank you.